Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Benton Blunt. How's it going? Oh my gosh, you have an incredible story. I I have to I have to talk to you about when you were 18 years old. I I was so intrigued by this story that I wanted to hear the emotion coming from you when okay. when your pastor snuck a microphone to your mouth at 18 years old and everybody heard this incredible voice what was that moment like for you uh it was a little strange for me because it wasn't something i had expected or was planning for so it was one of those things where i had somebody tell me you need to do this and then and i was thinking in my head i've never even thought about doing this so it was one of those things where I really didn't have a choice in the matter either because I guess uh, not a lot of the other, the other kids at the time could sing, so I was kind of stuck in that position anyway, and uh, close to 16 years later, I'm still doing it. That is great. Now, do you still talk to your pastor about that experience? Yeah, I do. Uh, he uh, His name's Tim Little, and he was actually a big part of my uh, the reason I still think that I'm successful doing music, especially as an in, in independent, because it taught me, uh, you know, everything about from from being a good business person to being a good showman to um, always kind of reaching outside the box to reinvent myself. Because if I wanted a long career, I was going to have to be able to evolve with, with what the other trends were and stuff like that. So he he taught me a lot uh, more than just giving me the opportunity to sing. He actually taught me how to to thrive. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad I asked you that because when I read read this in your bio, I thought, you know what, this is just too incredible. That doesn't just happen to everybody. So I was really I was really intrigued by that. And your answer is just amazing. Um, I'm sure Tim just absolutely adores you as well. And to think that, you know, he had a hand in, you know, creating this passion for you to make music has got to got to feel pretty good. Yeah, he, he's one of those people, too, that try to give to everybody. So uh, the fact that he gets to see things come out of what he's trying to do, I'm sure it makes him happy. And, and I know I know he definitely right. can do it all over again if he could. Right. Now, you you were also in a band. Um, are you still currently in the band Seven Miles? Uh, I'm not, well, technically I am. I started the band with Tim and a couple other friends, and uh, that's what I did for the first uh probably 10 years of my music career, even while I was doing country music. So, of course, with the the, uh, the schedule of touring now, it's hard mm-hmm. for me to do a band and a solo career. But right. uh, we still, we never say that we're done. We just, uh, we'll usually play a show a year still. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. That's good. And have, do, you, do you feel like you've learned a lot from being in a band versus doing, doing it solo? Do you think that uh, the difference is... Are significant. Yeah, uh, I think you know there's definitely differences when you have a a band like a a name where everybody's equal partners, as opposed to like I have a band now, but I'm the one that's in charge of putting the gas in the vehicle and buying the hotel rooms and uh, covering all the expenses, that kind of thing, uh, as opposed to where you're kind of equal on that. So right. it it definitely is a learning curve to go from one to the other, but I think one kind of prepares you for for life in the other part too. Right. I've, I've never actually asked anybody that question before, but I've always wanted to. So, um, you know, I, I mean, being on this end of music, I, I just imagine things, you know, it, I'm not actually directly involved with it. So I was just curious about that. Like, you know, the, the difference in, is it harder or is it, you know, easier for you to be, be on your own? You know, I wouldn't think about those things. So, yeah, and it's it's. I think there's definitely pros and cons to both because there's there's definitely disadvantages to you kind of running your own business too because then you take all the risk. Um, but as a musician, I think I'm kind of taking a risk just being a right. musician, so I'm pretty used to that. Right. Yeah. Well, the music industry is actually pretty brutal, you know, from stories that I've I've heard and I've seen from others. And it just it definitely can take a toll on you, but it can also give you some really great writing material. (laughs) You know, I mean, a lot of artists. Yeah. So that that's pretty awesome. Um, But another thing that that many people may not know is that you were. Uh, on season 10 of America's Got Talent and you did really well and you finished in the top 10. What was that experience like for you? 
Uh, so far, I've, I've done a lot of things in my my music career. I've I've moved to Nashville. I've signed a record deal. The, mm-hmm. the record label closed. But I've done all those things that a lot of artists are looking to do in their career. But to mm-hmm. date, uh, being on America's Got Talent has been the biggest learning experience of my entire career. Uh, it's it's one of those things that you don't really know what you're getting into. You right. can watch it on TV just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You think about oh, just a just a, a competition. It's not going to be that hard, and then you realize that it's a uh, uh, twelve to fifteen hour a day daily job leading up to that one performance. So right. I can do that six different times. That's incredible. I can't imagine the hard work that you put into that. You know, and and we do. We, we at, at home when you're watching it, you really you don't you don't think about everything that goes into that, you know, and you just think it's, you know, the one hour a week that you're watching that show. (laughs) So, um, wow. Wow. So kudos to you though. You did really, really well on that. And, you know, it's got to take a lot of courage to, to face even a show like that. I mean, how intimidating I I would never ever want to go up on stage and, and be judged by people, (laughs) you know, just, so, so I give you credit for that. That's that's just amazing. Um, do you still keep in touch with some of the people that you've met on that show? Yeah, yeah, I do, and and that's the, I'm I'm really glad that I did America's Got Talent because I have some friends that were on The Voice and they were on American Idol, and, and some of them keep in touch with each other, the contestants. But I noticed that with America's Got Talent, it honestly seemed more like a family, and it's kind of like when you used to watch those variety shows like Star Search and things like that, uh-huh. it's kind of showing, showing my age. But uh, no, the, sh- We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the acts aren't similar, so it's right. not as much of a sense of competition other than you performing for those judges. And I'd say, you know, that part is definitely intimidating. But right. uh, the experience made it a little easier to perform, honestly, because there wasn't, uh, I didn't have to worry about, okay, i got to compete about, they're going to compete with 47 other singers. I only had to compete with, you know, maybe four or five, and usually they weren't even in my group for the week. So right. it, uh, it's one of those weird things where there definitely was an, some intimidating factors with the judges and people that you've seen on TV for years that you had to mm-hmm. perform to mm-hmm. get their acknowledgement, good or bad. And, and the, But as far as the actual performance part and competing against other people, um, I think it actually was a little easier. Right, right. Well, I I mean, I I definitely got to give you credit for doing that really because I just I don't think I ever could. I don't I don't think I could. And if you could redo it, if you could do it all over again, would you? Oh, I, in a heartbeat. Uh it was one of those experiences that I'll never forget. And my family got to be a part of it. Um uh, my son who is to got to go to New York City. Uh oh, okay. something I'd never got to do until the show came on. So, uh, I I, not just me, but my family in general got to experience some things that we couldn't have even started to, to do right. before. So I would do it 10 times over if I could. Oh, that's great. Now, you said you live in Nashville now. Um, have have you have you gone and participated at CMA Fest, or is that something you have planned to do? Well, uh, uh make a long story short, I actually, I did move to Nashville. I moved there from North Carolina where I grew up, but I moved mm-hmm. from Nashville to South Carolina, Greenville, which is where I currently live. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, once it, that, it, well, and a lot of people don't know that because I spend so much time in Nashville. Uh, right. People just assume that I live there too. <laughs> um, but when the record label closed uh, in Nashville, kind of a, kind of a tough business and once the label mm-hmm. closes even if it wasn't your fault because it was just the label imploded um right people are really scared to work with you for a while because they want to make sure that there's no weird things going on with your contracts and so i wasn't getting a lot of work in town and i was playing out of town a lot anyway so the carolinas are my roots so i just packed up and i moved to, to south carolina and, and just started hitting the road and playing shows oh that's great now do you ever come out on the west uh, I do. This past year, we came out there several times. Uh, we made it almost to California. We came to Vegas three times. We played in Washington, Seattle. I mean, we played in Seattle, Washington. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we played in Wyoming. We played in New Mexico. We never quite got all the way to the West Coast, but that's that's my goal for 2016. 
Oh, that's great. Well, we'll we'll definitely hope and uh, keep our fingers crossed for you that you get to come out here. I'm currently in California. Um, I'm I'm okay. sort of I'm sort of stuck out here for a little while, but plan on getting back out to Nashville soon. So we'll see how that goes. But you you yeah, definitely need to come out to the West Coast. I think that um, you know there's tons of places that I think you know would love to have you and your in your talent and um, you know just. I'm just excited for you. And so what does 2016 have in store for you so far? I mean, you have shows lined up and everything that we can share with everyone. Yeah, I do. Uh, we, we've we already started seeing a change, obviously, since the show went off in uh, the, the type of performances I've been able to do. Because I, mm-hmm. I started playing, like every other country singer, in bars. And those bars, they, they don't let you just do you. You usually play a right. lot of cover songs. And, yep. Uh, but but I'm noticing more people are asking me to come to play my music. So I'm actually performing uh, a normal concert in the show. And we still do some cover songs with people actually coming to hear songs they purchased to mine and things like that. So right. uh, I'm super excited about that. And uh, in January alone, we're going to six different states. Um, and that's what we've started booking as of a couple of weeks ago. And bookings are starting to come in more and more. So it just looks like I'm going to be out on the road in a lot of different places this year. Oh, absolutely. Well, and you have you have a really big following on Twitter. You have over 70,000 followers on Twitter, which yeah. is incredible. I, I'm, you know, um, I see those numbers and I think, wow, this is great. So your fan base is definitely growing. Same with your Facebook fan base. And do you feel that social media has helped you grow with, with your craft at all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I started way back when social media wasn't even a word and I think my mm-hmm. space was probably uh it it was doing way better than Facebook at the time because Facebook was still like a college app and uh right. ever since then every time a new app came out I just felt like that that's the way uh that advertisement and promotion and things were headed so I just tried to stay in the loop with all that and that's you know it's it, it's funny because some guys you know they can they can come out with a record label and put one single out and next thing you know they have 300,000 followers which is Absolutely. awesome um, Absolutely. but I like the fact that it's taken me so long because all of my followers are people that I've traveled for 15 years and met and have relationships with to some degree uh, yes. some of course are from the show but, what? Um, and and that's yeah. so true among the independent artists, you know, um, you, you guys are more approachable and you connect with your fans. You don't have management people that are connecting to your fans for you. So right. I think the connection between the singer and the fan is so crucial. And I really, I mean, it gives you loyal fans, people that relate to you, people that get to know you for you. And I think it's just more special. Um, Yes, there's always going to be the top 40. And yes, we love them. But being able to interact with somebody that you admire, I think is so important. And it means so much to the fans. I've, I've talked to so many fans, you know, over the last couple of years. And when they get a response on Facebook from a comment they made from the actual person they responded to, you know, they just, yeah. they're elated. So, uh, you know, props to you for that, you know, staying real and building those relationships with your fans, because that's what it's all about, I think. Yeah, I agree. And I, I want to have a career in music and not just a moment. And that's what I think a lot of artists have turned it into. If they know if they get a single to number one, they'll make a lot of money and then it really doesn't matter. But for me, um, right. I would rather play to a 500 seat venue um, for the rest of my life than to play for a, a sold out 200,000 seat crowd for a year. Uh, right. So I tried to look at it that way in my promotion and my you know, my, my songs, even the stuff that I write, I want it to be something that people connect with because I want it to be something they, you know, they always want to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep it real and you'll keep them connected and inspired. Absolutely. I, I think that's, I think that's a great way to look at it. And, you know, one of the things that I often think about is, you know, when I lived in Nashville, I would go out to the local, you know, bars and, you know, Legends Corner and the stage and Crossroads and places like that. And, you know, these bands would be playing and they're so full of energy. And then you see the crowd just being able to dance because there's a dance floor. And then you go to these big stadium concerts and people are just standing there. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. they're watching the music. So, so as an artist, does it does it make you happy to see when people are engaged and they're able to dance and and show that they're having a good time? 
Yeah, that's and that's kind of what I've always uh, tried to make my show about is more is if you look at back over my picture over the years, uh, people kind of gradually pushed me to the front of pictures. But in band mm-hmm. photos, I was always wanting to be in the back. I've never I never wanted to be like the showcase person uh, as a solo right. artist. Obviously, you have to be. Yeah. But. Uh, I want my shows to be an experience. I want it to be something where the crowd feels like they're part of the show just as much as I am when I'm singing the song. So seeing them involved actively definitely uh, is a is a good thing. Well, that's great. I am so excited for you. And I know that, you know, your fan base is just going to keep growing. And, you know, everybody at Center Stage is, you know, really, you know, waiting and watching to see where you go because you are extremely talented. And so we're going to post all of your links so that everybody can follow you and um, all all of that good stuff. Now, is there anything that we didn't or that I didn't touch on that, that you wanted to get out there for all the fans to know? Um, I guess a lot of people didn't know uh, during the show that I had music already out, some records that I recorded and things that are on iTunes, and, and just because I couldn't really talk about it on the show, they they kind of told us not to. People okay. didn't realize that I already have music, um, but I will have more music coming coming out as well. Um, so people can find stuff on iTunes and Spotify and pretty much every digital outlet you can possibly go to, uh, you can find some of my stuff that I already have. Oh, that's great. And we'll, we'll post an iTunes link on our article as well. That way it's direct access, you know, easy for them to, to find. Um, it, it was so great talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. And, um, uh, no you know, Thanksgiving is just a couple days away, and I'm sure you have a lot to be thankful for, as do I. So happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. And um, just keep us up to date. If you have something coming out, um, let us know so we can promote it for you. And uh, we'll, we're just going to keep watching you because you're definitely you're headed places and it's great and we can't wait to see well i appreciate it very much and hopefully i'll make it out that way uh maybe before you have you make it back to Nashville. right <laughs> that'd be great i would love that then we could actually yeah. meet and do an on-camera interview or something that'd be fun sounds, sounds good to me all right well you have a great rest of your evening and have an awesome thanksgiving and we'll talk to you soon uh, thank you i hope you do too thanks Bye. Bye.